The new Generate Blocks Navigation block gives us the ability to style our navigations like we never had before. It also unlocks all kinds of creativity to create layouts that just weren't possible inside Generate Press. However, it is a bit more complex. There are a lot of moving parts, selectors, and settings you really need to know in order to get the most out of it. I spent a lot of time with this block already, so in this video, I'm gonna go setting by setting and show you exactly how everything inside here works and give you a few tips and tricks along the way. I think it's gonna be a great primer on getting started with the navigation block so you can get out there and start building some different navigations for yourself. If you're interested in seeing how the whole thing works, then stick around and let's get started. So I do have the Generate Blocks Pro version 2.2 Alpha 1 installed on this site. I'm actually getting a hold of this just shortly before it's actually released. And I just mentioned that to say two things. One, an alpha version is never meant to be used on a live site. So make sure you're only using this for testing purposes and to get yourself familiar with this. Of course, Generate Blocks would probably like any bug reports that you can find. So I would encourage you to spend some time playing around with it so we can get this released out into the wild even sooner. And the other thing is to say that some of what you see in today's video might change slightly. I'm pretty confident most things are set in place now, but you might see slight differences between what you see in my video today and what you have when this is actually released and as it goes through all the different alpha and beta stages. Now, like with most things in Generate Blocks, it works best with Generate Press. This is no exception, and here we can use the Generate Press elements to create our site header. Let's just go take a look at our site now, which by default is just using the header that you've always had inside Generate Press that you can control here in the customizer. But if we want to build all this out using the new Generate Blocks features, then the best bet is to go back into the back end, go into your elements, add a new element. We're going to choose a block element and hit create. Here we can just go ahead and call this site header. And on the right hand side under your element panel, you're going to want to change this element type to site header. Now, one of the big benefits to using the Generate Press elements is we have control of all the display rules. This means we could set this to be our entire site, and now this header will actually show up across our entire website. But we can also set different headers in different places. We could have a different header for logged in versus logged out, or maybe have a simplified header for things like squeeze or landing pages. For right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to entire site. And if we go ahead and publish these changes and refresh on the front end, you'll see that our old generate press header is gone. It's been replaced by what we created here inside this element, which of course right now is blank, but you can see this gets rid of the default menu and replaces it with whatever you've set as your site header. So this 2.2 release actually comes with two new blocks. Let's go ahead and open our block inserter here, and you can see we have the new navigation block as well as a site header block. Now I would recommend you start with the site header block. If we go ahead and add that in here, it's mostly just a plain container, except if we go into the settings here, we have some settings for a sticky header. By default, it's set to none, but we can change this to always sticky or sticky when scrolling up. Let's take a look at how those work quickly. I've gone ahead and just given this header a blue background color and added an image inside of it just so we can see how this works. Now right now we don't have any of that sticky turned on, so when I open up this page and scroll down you'll see our header just scrolls out of view. But let's go back in here and into our site header, into these settings, and we'll change the sticky header to always sticky. Go ahead and save those changes, refresh on the front end, and now you can see as I scroll down the page the header is sticky at the top. We also have the option to change this to sticky when scrolling up. And now if we save and refresh, we'll see that it's not sticky as we scroll down. But as soon as I start scrolling back up, it fades right back into view. This is a nice little addition to give us all these sticky controls here inside the site header. But besides these sticky controls, there's nothing really else special about the site header. We do have the option to set the sticky breakpoint. So right now we had it on always sticky, but we can choose mobile, desktop, or even set our own custom sticky breakpoint. The rest of the controls are just what you'd see in any other container. So this is all we really need to explore inside the site header. I will mention that by default, the site header block uses the tag name of header. If you didn't want to use the site header and just wanted to use your own container block, you just want to make sure to go into that tag and change the tag name to header from the default div. Now that we got a feel for how that site header works, I just wanna start again from the beginning. We're just gonna choose something pretty simple here for our design. I'll give it maybe a light gray background. We'll go into our spacing here and give it maybe 16 pixels of top padding, and we'll do eight on the left and right. 
Where we're gonna spend the bulk of our time in this demo is with the navigation block. So let's go ahead inside of our site header and search for navigation. Now you're gonna to wanna to use this one with a blue icon, not the default one from WordPress, which is pretty limited. We'll go ahead and add our navigation block in here. And you can see it's added this navigation block with a lot of items nested inside of it. We're gonna go through all of these. It can be a little bit overwhelming, but I think once you get your mind wrapped around it, it becomes pretty intuitive to use. So starting with the navigation block itself, let's go over here to the right-hand side and go to our settings panel. This navigation tree here will show you all the same elements you'll see here in the list view, and you can click any one of them to go directly to that element. But let's scroll down here and take a look at what other settings we have. Here we're able to choose which menu on our site we want to use inside this navigation. I've set up two menus inside WordPress here, so we have one for this Google I.O. demo that I did, and another that I just labeled primary. So from right here, you can select which menu you want, but you're still gonna to wanna to go into the WordPress menu settings to set up those menus. Under sub menu type, we have the same options we have inside the Generate Press Customizer for hover, click menu item, or click toggle. Next, we can set our mobile breakpoint. So this is gonna be when the menu goes down to a hamburger menu. By default, it's set to our mobile breakpoint, which is 768, but you could change this to your tablet at 1024 or put any value you want. We'll go ahead and stick with 768. Next, we have the mobile menu type. Here we have two options, a full overlay or a partial overlay. In order to see this, we're gonna to have to go to our mobile preview. So I'll go ahead and go into our mobile mode now, and we'll go ahead and open up that menu. Now, by clicking all this, it kind of moved us around on which element we have selected. So I'm gonna to have to go back to our navigation and in our settings here and back to our mobile menu type where we just left off. Here in the full overlay, you can see your mobile menu is gonna take up the entire screen, but you can change this to partial overlay and the menu will show up just below your header. Now this doesn't preview great on the back end, so let me show you what it looks like on the front end. We'll go ahead and save those changes, refresh on the front end, and I'll go into my inspector here where we can trigger the mobile menu. So now with this partial overlay, when I open up the menu, it's gonna open just below our header. But if I went back and changed this again to full overlay, we'll save those changes and refresh on the front end. Now the menu is gonna take up our full screen. So this is really just a preference in whichever you prefer for your layout. I'm gonna leave this on partial overlay now because I think it does a better job of showing us this mobile menu transition. Inside of this dropdown, we have several options for the transition. If we choose something like fade, right now it's set to 200 milliseconds. I'm gonna bump that up to 1000 milliseconds just to make it easier to see here on the demo. But when we select fade as our mobile menu transition, now when we open and close this menu, you can see instead of it being abrupt, it fades in and out. Back into those mobile menu transitions, we have slide left, slide right, slide up, slide down, and then we have fade and slide for each one of those directions as well. So if we wanted to do something like slide and fade up, now when we go ahead and open and close this menu, you can see it slides and fades up. There's some pretty great options in here and you can probably find one of these presets that'll work well for your design. We'll go ahead and change this speed back to something like 250 milliseconds or 0.25 seconds. Those are probably all the controls you're gonna to need to know inside the navigation block, so let's move on to the menu toggle. So the menu toggle references this hamburger icon menu here. Now, most of the time you're gonna be using this on your smaller breakpoints, but with all these controls, you could actually set the hamburger menu as your desktop menu as well. It just depends on your preference. Now with that menu toggle selected and here in the settings panel, we have a few controls. First for the background of this icon. So if I wanted to change that to blue, you can see the background here changes to blue. We can also set the hover color, but most of the time when you're using hamburger menus, you're using a touch device, so the hover color doesn't really matter. However, you might wanna go ahead and set that for both your hover and current colors there, just in case somebody is using this on a device with a mouse. We can also set our text color. In this case, it is the icon. So if I went in here and set this to bright green, you can see our menu icon went to green. We can also set this hover color, so if I change that to black, you can see now when we hover over it, that icon is changing to black. I went ahead and reset these into something that looks pretty decent. Now when we hover over it, the icon just gets a little bit darker. Now, speaking of the icon, we have the option to add our own icons. 
By default, we get these three lines, which represents the hamburger menu and the X for the close icon. But if you click on these and click on custom SVG, you can paste in any kind of SVG you want. So you could use a different icon for this menu. To do this in the old generate press way of creating your site header, you have to create some PHP in order to make all that work. Now I'm really excited that we can swap these out pretty easily. The same goes for the close icon here. We can go into custom SVG and paste in whatever we'd like. We also have a toggle here for showing the icon by itself, which is the default. But if we toggle that off, we have the option to add text next to that menu item, which isn't something I really prefer to do. So I'm pretty happy with the default here of showing the icon by itself. Now, the thing that you really need to pay attention to with all of these new block elements inside of our navigation block is here under the styles panel and then the manage selectors. Here, you're gonna see any additional selectors for this element. Now, because we changed the background colors and hover colors and all of that, we got some extra selectors here that's actually targeting all those elements and doing the controls for us. Everything you see in these settings panels are kind of like the quick settings, but when you use those, it's actually building out the selectors. So we could go in, like earlier we changed the SVG. We could go in here specifically to the SVG and change the size. By default, it's 25 pixels, but I could change it to 10 pixels in here, and that's gonna make it quite a bit smaller. I'll go back and delete these out so we go back to the defaults, but using this manage selectors here is gonna be really important in all these blocks because some of them have quite a few that you might wanna take control of. Next up on our list is the menu container. Now this is a wrapper that goes around our entire menu and it's really gonna be mostly used for our mobile views, so we'll stay here for now. Here in the quick settings, we see our mobile background and mobile text. So let's go ahead and open up that menu. You can see our background here is black and our text is white, but we have the ability to change that here. If we wanted a blue background with black text, we can control all that here in the quick settings. If we just took a peek at this back at desktop, we can see none of that change. This is really affecting the mobile version here. If I went in here and changed this to blue, you can see it didn't change here on desktop, but if we go back into our mobile version and open that menu, our items are now blue, even though we can't see them on that background color. So really this menu container is something that's gonna be controlling your mobile menu more than it is your desktop. Again, we're gonna to wanna to go into these settings here and open up our selectors. Here you can see we have quite a bit of a bigger list. We have our mobile menu container, which is what we were just using to control that background color and text color. Inside of it, we have our mobile menu itself, which is this menu in here. We have our mobile menu items, which are each one of our links inside of our mobile menu. And for each one of those items, we also have the hover state and the current state. So while there's a lot of selectors here, you probably want access to all of these so you can make the tweaks you want. So it's a good thing they're here, but you have to remember to come find them here in this manage selectors area. You also have all those controls for the submenu. So when we open up this submenu here, here we have the mobile submenu, the submenu items, which you see here, the submenu item hover and the submenu item current. So now we have controls for each one of these items individually, but you have to go in here and find exactly what you're looking for if you wanna make tweaks to each one of these different elements. Next up on our list is the menu element. Now this one is mostly just a wrapper. You're not gonna have a lot of settings inside this one. Let's go back into our settings here and you can see the only options we have in here are again, selecting which menu we want. We also had that inside the navigation block, but you can select it here from the menu block as well. Now to show you exactly where this is at, we'll just go in here to the backgrounds and we'll change this to a blue background color. And you can see this is our menu wrapper here. Again, you're probably not gonna make too many tweaks to this menu itself. If we go into our selectors, you can see there's no additional selectors in here. So this is one that you can pretty much leave alone. Next up is our menu item. And this is definitely something that you're gonna find yourself tweaking. I've gone ahead and selected our menu item. And even though that's listed once, it's the same for each one of the items in your menu. So here inside the settings, you can see we have color settings for our background. This is for the background itself, the hover background color and the current background color. We also have the same for our text, for the regular text, the hover text and the current text. In here, we can also change the font size. So if I wanted something like one rim, I can just type that right in here into this font size. We have the inline padding, which is your padding on the left and right. And we have our block padding here. For whatever reason, the inline padding is set to pixels and the block padding is set to M. You might wanna tweak that in your designs. I'm not sure exactly why those are the defaults. However, you can go in here and use the full controls inside Generate Blocks to do anything you want to these menu items themselves. This gives us total control over these items, including if we wanted to make pseudo elements or effects, you can do a lot of cool things inside of here. 
Now, if we go into our manage selectors, you'll see we have hover, current, link, and drop down button. Now, the way this is structured, you have a menu item, which is kind of a wrapper with a link inside of it. So here you can target the link directly or this hover and current will kind of target that wrapper around it. We also have the drop down button by itself. So you can see we have a drop down here for services. If I wanted to go ahead and change the color of that, I could go in here and change it to red. And you can see my drop down arrow is red now instead of the same color as the rest of my navigation. All these little bits are really nice to have because we have way more control over the menu because we have all these individual selectors and generate blocks didn't keep any of those away from us. Now the sub menu works very similarly to the menu item itself, but here we're directly targeting the sub menu in a drop down. So if we go to our settings here, you'll see we have the item background. This is our normal, our hover and our current, and we have the same for our item text. If we go into our selectors here and then into manage selectors, you can see we have our menu item, our menu item hover, our menu item current, our menu item link, and then we have a GB sub menu. This GB sub menu kind of wraps around all of your links here. You can see that it's inheriting styles right now and what it's doing is setting the position. Again, this is another item inside of our menu where we wanna pay attention to these selectors because you're gonna to have to target things specifically if you wanna override some of the defaults. Now I want to wrap this up by showing you just a few other things that you're probably going to need to do as you build out your headers. By default, this menu is completely left aligned, but if we go into our menu here and under layout, you can see that it's already set to display flex, which is putting all these items next to each other. But if we wanted to right align this menu, we could go here to our justify content and select flex end, which will move everything over to the right hand side. We also have the ability to add things inside of our navigation. So a good example of something like that might be a button. So I'll go ahead and just add a button to my page. We'll just put in CTA, and then I'm just gonna drag this here inside of my navigation. Now, I probably want this to go after my menu, so I'm just gonna go ahead and move that down to the bottom of the tree here. We can go into our navigation block itself, into the layout settings, and change this to a display flex, which will put both of these next to each other. Now, I want these to be aligned center, and I wanna justify that content back to the end, which will push this back over to the right side just like I had it before. So understanding all your flex controls is really important. Flex is something you're gonna use a lot inside of a header. And lastly, if we go into this menu container and into our settings, you can see we have this little flag here that says add the GB menu show on toggled class name to your blocks that you want to show only in the toggled mobile menu. That sounds like a mouthful there, but I'm going to go ahead and copy this to my clipboard. I actually use this in another video where I built out the Google IO header. It really came in handy here. So instead of having the CTA just inside my navigation here, I'm actually going to drop it here inside the menu container. And then I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here in my settings panel under advanced and paste in that class. You can see it's gone from our desktop menu now, but if I go in here into our mobile preview and open up this menu, you can see that button here now that is inside of our menu container is showing here inside of our mobile view, but it's not showing up inside of our desktop view. And that's because of this class, the GB menu show on toggled that will set things up so you can show something just in your mobile menu and not on your desktop menu. Like I said, I ended up using this on the first header I built with generate blocks. So it really does come in handy and I'm glad they had the foresight to add that in here. Now I'm not going to lie. It took me two or three attempts at building out some menus before I started to get comfortable with the new navigation element. There are so many moving parts to a navigation and generate blocks is giving us all the controls inside of here. So it just takes a little while to figure out where everything's at and what controls each different element inside the navigation. But I would encourage you to not give up because once this clicks for you, you're going to realize just like I did that you never want to build out a navigation the old way again. You can do so many more creative things now that we have full control over our entire navigation. I'll put a link to the other navigation video I did at the end of this video, and I'll make sure to come update this with any other navigation videos that I do as we're trying to build up our muscles and learn how to use this new element. Hopefully you learned something in today's video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up, maybe even a comment down below. And if you want to make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe and we'll see you then.